Hi, and welcome to this tutorial of Graham the Dragon. I'm going to show you how to make him using our new Satina Super Smooth Sugar Paste, which is great for these stacked carved cakes. My name's Claire, so let's get going. In this first lesson, we're going to make Graham's head and legs, and we're gonna do this using what I've got in the bowl here, which is some Rice Krispie Treats. So what I've done, is I've made them up and I've just let them cool a bit because when, you're, when you've made it, you don't want them to be too warm whilst you're shaping them. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to do the head. So I'm just gonna get an amount. So this is what we're doing here. We're making the head first. And we're just gonna squeeze it together. Now, the recipe for right, to make these Rice Krispies, um, there's a link below the video, um, but I'll just tell you, so it's, 200 grams of um, marshmallows, which you melt in a pan with 50 grams of butter. You can do it in the microwave as well. You don't have to do it in the pan. And then um, you then add 160 grams of Rice Krispies to the mixture and mix it all together. And then basically you let it cool slightly. This is quite cool now for me to touch um, before you start squeezing it together. So to make the head, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm just squeezing it together in sort of like a, it's, it's got a flat bottom, but it's a bit like an oval shape to start with. But then we're just having this little bit on top that's a bit smaller because this is where his eyes are going to go. So we just put a little bit on the top, like so. And then this is where his nose is going to be. So what we do is we just shape it. I and mean, it's all just done by pushing with your hands but we're just gonna shape the front slightly. It's got a nice rounded back, but the front is just slightly to a point, which is where we're going to have his nose, like this. And the more you crush it and squeeze it in tightly, the less, um, the, the firmer it's gonna be and the easier it's gonna be to cover in buttercream and not have too much of a, um, sort of bobbly texture. So that's pretty much it for the head. Just keep it nice and simple, nice nose, a little bit for the eyes, like so. And then what we do is we just leave that to set. So we've already got one that we made earlier. If it's sticking to your hands a little bit, just put a little bit of Trex on your hands and it'll stop it from sticking. Okay, so head one side. And then now for the legs. So the legs are very, very simple. It's exactly the same method in, uh, as using uh, with the head where you crush it all together. But what you do is you just kind of make, best described really as two large fat bananas um, because you just want them curved in um, but at opposite sides because you're gonna have the body in the middle and then you're gonna have the legs just curved around and then put them to one side to set whilst we move on to the next bit. Now we're going to move on to making Graham's body. I've used Satina Golden Delight Cake Mix and I've made a seven inch, two six inches and two five inch cakes. It's a lot easier if you can make these size cakes because you won't have so much wastage when carving. And it's a great mix to use because it's really firm for carving but it's also a really moist cake to eat. So first of all, I've sandwiched them together with some Satina frosting. This again is a really, really good frosting because it's oil based so it doesn't actually have to be kept in the fridge. So it lasts really well and it's really stable. So for the body, we're basically gonna be making a little bit like an egg shape. So get yourself a carving knife and start from the top. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go round and obviously go wider to the bottom and start by doing that and then turn it round again. Okay, so I've got about halfway. And then what I want to do is make it more straight on one side and more rounded at the front because I want him to look like he's got a bit of a belly on him. So with this side, this is the side that's going to be his belly. I'm going a little bit more in from the center and a little bit more straighter down and then turning the knife to go wider at the front. And what that does is it gives him a bit more of a belly, whereas the back here is just a little bit straighter like so so just round it off so he's got a nice round belly like that and then just do the sides 
in kind of a straight egg shape. Okay, and then what we do is we just cut into the bottom so it is like that egg shape. And this was a seven inch cake on the bottom and I've sat it onto a six inch hardboard, round hardboard, because obviously you've cut quite a lot off. Okay, so now we've got the shape. So as you can see, we've got a nice egg shape, but we've got a little bit of a roundness here for his belly. We're ready to move on to the next bit, which is covering it in the frosting. As you can see, I've had a clear up and I've got my frosting here and I've got a palette knife. And because the cake is on a turntable, it's really easy just to go around with your frosting and you're covering the whole cake with a thin layer of frosting. And make sure you put it on the whole of the cake all the way around until you reach the top. Like that. Okay, so... What we're going to do now is we're going to move it straight onto the board that we um, are using. So I've got here a 12 inch board in brown and we're just gonna put the legs there and we're gonna stick him on. So I'm just using a palette knife just to get underneath my board, just to loosen him so I can pick it up and then put a little bit of buttercream or frosting or ganache, whatever you're using onto the board. Now you kind of want it on the center because bearing in mind he's going to have a tail as well. So the actual body wants to be on the center of the board like so. And then what we do whilst our buttercream is still quite wet, we're just going to put the legs here and just sort of squeeze them in like so. And just push them so they're nicely shaped around. And then take our frost in and we're just gonna put a little bit on the legs as well. Just blend it all in. And what that does is that gets rid of the bumpiness of the Rice Krispies. Okay, so I'm just finishing off the other leg at the front here. So it's all nicely covered in frosting. Like that. It doesn't have to be too neat. As long as it's all covered. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to move on to covering Graham's body and legs. Now, it's really important that you have the right sugar paste. And I have got here the new Satina Super Smooth Paste. And it is wonderful. It's so much stronger than many of the sugar paste that I've used. You can roll it really, really thin. And it's also really good to for coloring. Now, I've actually colored this. So I've used holly green. And I've also used lime green. And I've just kneaded it so the colors mix in really well. And it's really, really pliable. So I'm going to start by rolling it out. And as I said, you can roll this paste so thin. It's so strong and it's so stretchy as well. It's great for covering cakes because you don't get any of that elephant skin that you do with a lot of other pastes. So start by rolling it really, really nice and thin. Most sugar paste, you tend to roll about five mil. With this Satina Super Smooth, you can actually roll it three mil thick and it still covers really really well because it's so strong okay so i've rolled this out nice and thin and just remember when you are rolling as you're rolling it make sure you have plenty of icing sugar underneath and just keep turning it it's important that you just keep turning it so it doesn't stick and once you're happy with it we then go to covering Graham. Just make sure your paste is nice and loose off your table. And then what I do is I get my rolling pin and I fold the paste over my rolling pin. Then I bring the cake to me rather than dragging the paste over. And then I just lift it up 
and then let it flop over like so. And what is so good about this paste is it's so strong that normally at this point you would have it tearing away and you'd have a big gap, but it, look how strong it is. It's on a really tall cake and yet it's, it just stays without any tears. So now it's on there. We want to start smoothing it down. So what you do is you start from the top and I'm just using my hands at this point. So start from the top with your hands, just smooth it on like this. And then what you do is as you smooth it down to the bottom, any gathering like that, just pull, pull out the pleats like so. And then smooth it round and then just smooth it over the legs and then round the legs at the bottom. And then the same on the other side. So bring it round, round the legs. And then I'm going to turn it round so you can see the back. So you can see we've got quite a lot of gathering there. So all you do, start from the top and just smooth, just pull it away like a fabric. And then just smooth down. It's so strong, this paste, that it just doesn't tear. So you've got this nice, almost vertical cake and you can just play around with the paste like this and smooth it down. Even where you've got a, a, a little bit of a overlap, you just use your hands and you can just smooth it out and it's so easy to use. It really is the paste for everyone, this. If you're a beginner and you're not very confident, it's a great paste to use. If you're a professional, you would absolutely love this paste. So then, final bits at the bottom here. Press it in, okay? Then once we've got it kind of roughly covered, we just take a knife and we're just going to score around and just cut around the shape, getting rid of the excess. Don't worry about any of the frosting on your board because we can wipe that off later. Okay, and then once you've kind of cut most of it off, we use a smoother. Now, I love these. These are Bellissimo Flexi Smoothers. They're actually really for making sharp edges on cakes, but I think they are fabulous for smoothing as well because they're really bendy. So just use them to smooth over any little cracks or cr creases on your cake as you can see, it's already really smooth as it is, so there isn't really that many. And this wonderful paste just works really well with smoothers. And then finally, I'm just going to press in on his belly. Don't worry too much about his belly because it's going to be covered anyway. Press around. All around the front and the back like this and as you can see there was no tears it was really easy to do and it's super smooth so now we're ready to move on to the next bit so now i'm going to show you how to make graham's belly and his feet and his little arms so i've got some more of the satina super smooth sugar paste here and i've colored it with some cream and then i'll just take a little bit of icing sugar and then I'm going to roll it out. Just keep lifting it and moving it so it doesn't stick. And roll it into sort of an ovalish shape so it wants to be longer than it is wider. So you see, I've rolled that out really, really quite thin for a sugar paste because this sugar paste is so strong that you can roll it out thin. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it into kind of like an eggish shape. So I'm starting here and then I'm going to cut so it goes wider at the bottom and then the same on the other side. So it's wider at the bottom. I mean, you can use templates if you want, but I prefer just to do it freehand. Okay. 
okay like that just get rid of this sugar paste out the way and then what we want to do is we want to stick it on but I haven't measured it so I'm just going to pick this up and do a dry run if you like so I'm not actually going to glue it on I just want to check it for the height okay so that's not too bad I'm just going to cut a little bit off the top so just take a little bit off the top here round it off at the bottom and then before you actually put it on now we know that the shape and size is right I just want to smooth off the edges and round them off a bit so when it's on his belly it just looks a bit more natural nicely smoothed in like that okay so what we want to do is we want to actually glue it on so just take some edible glue which I have here and make sure you get the right side so obviously you want the side where he's got this big fat belly sticking out and then we're going to stick his belly on like that so it goes up to his neck like that and just smooth it down and then it goes round to the bottom if you've got any excess at the bottom you can just trim it off and then you can just tuck it in and smooth it over a little bit I'm just going to take a smoother just to tuck that in so you can't see any rough bits okay and then we take a Dresden tool and all we do just to add a little bit of texture is we just go across just leaving about three quarters of an inch gap between each one and although he's headless I think already he's starting to look like a dragon so now for the hands and feet so I've got some more of my Satina super smooth sugar paste let's move that out of the way for now so to make his feet you take some of the sugar paste and then what you do in terms of size sort of slightly bigger than a ping pong ball and just knead it so you get rid of any cracks and then just roll it into a ball and then what you do is you kind of want to shape it into like a triangle so flatten it slightly and then you want to shape that triangle shape like that and then just keep flattening it a little bit okay and then once you've done that take a knife and you want to cut his, his little toes out so you take a V shape out of one side here like that and then you do the same here so he's got three toes like so and then take your Dresden tool just to sort of smooth it down a little bit here so that's like your basic foot but then obviously we want to make it look a little bit better so what we do is we then just use our fingers just to smooth that out a bit like that and then the same on the other side I just tend to use my fingers just to smooth it out and then to make the actual toes look a little bit better just open them up slightly and then just use your fingers to take that tip off the top so they're not quite so scary looking and sharp like so so there we go that's how we make our feet and then obviously repeat that so you've got two and then to make the arms the arms were a lot smaller than the legs so we're going to take a similar sized amount but this is for the whole arm so give it a little knead just to get rid of any creases and then what we do so roll it into a sausage to start with like so then what we do to make the hand is we just roll I kind of use the pressure of my finger so I just kind of roll on one end like that so you've got like 
it goes a little bit smaller on one end like that and then I just flatten it a little bit like so and then the same again so what I do is I want to make three fingers so just cut out a little V like that and similar sort of thing you just want to use your Dresden tool just to mark it like that and then just smooth it out with your fingers this is a really great sugar paste for smoothing out it doesn't have any of that cracking of the elephant skin it just smooths so easily and same again so you just want to take away the harshness of his fingertips because we're making a cute dragon here so so once we've got his hand like that we just roll this a little bit his arm like so just roll it to stretch it a little bit and we want to put a little bit of a bend in it so if you imagine his hands like this so what we do is we just bend it slightly but then again you take your Dresden tool and you just put some little creases in it like so but then just smooth them out a bit with your finger so they're not too harsh and it just gives that little bit of a bend like that so then we've got our arms and then repeat that so you've got one of each with the arms and legs out the way we're now going to move on to the tail tail is very very simple to make it is literally just a cone of sugar paste so take some of the sugar paste and again give it a little knead make sure it's nice and pliable and then all we're doing is we're literally rolling it into a ball like so so it's nice and smooth and then we're just going to roll it into a cone so all we do is we just roll it on one end like so now just bear in mind when you're doing this it needs to fit on the board so you might want to just refer back to your your dragon's body on the board just to make sure it's not too long so nice like that and then just pop it back on its top again just to make sure you get a nice flat bottom which is going to stick on the back of your dragon like so and that for now at least until we do scales is the tail very very simple so the next step is to show you how to stick these onto Graham so we take some edible glue and what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to paint the glue onto where my arms are going to go because your arms are the ones that need the glue to go off a little bit just so they stay in position. So paint your glue onto your body, just overlapping his belly a little bit like so. And I'm just going to let that go off a little bit because it needs to be really sticky for the arms to stay in position. So then I'm going to stick at the front here where his feet are going to go so a little bit of glue on there and on there like that and then so his feet can go on so just take his feet and all you do is just sit them so they're in front of his legs and not covering his belly too much you don't want them too close together but you just want them slightly overlapping the belly but just sort of in front of his legs um, and then I'm going to put some glue on the end of my tail like this okay and then I'm just going to stick that on I'm just I'll just turn the board around just so you can see but it's very simple all I'm doing is just sticking that on now because this is still quite soft you can sort of manipulate it just so it sticks on a bit better and shapes around his body a bit better like that okay and then back to the arms in that minute or so it took me to do that it just gives the glue chance to go a little bit stickier so we can put our arms on so we just place them on like so and just press down like that like that now I'm doing this all backwards so you guys can see so hopefully that looks okay now his hands and feet need nails 
So what you do is you take a little bit of black sugar paste, and this is for his toenails. So you get a little sort of pea-sized amount, roll it into a bowl, and then all we want to do is make it into a triangle shape. So to do that, we just pinch it with M2 and press it with that. So you've got your fingers in the shape of a triangle and then just flatten it a little bit. So pinch like that and press. So we've got this nice little triangle like that. And I've already made some. So what we're gonna do is just stick them on the end. So just dab a little bit of glue on each toe. And then just get your little nails and just stick them on. And then for his hands, very similar, just a little bit smaller. So get a smaller amount of your sugar paste. And then same again. So you're just kind of manipulating it into a triangle shape using your fingers like so. And again, you want to make six of them and then just dab a little bit of glue on the end of each finger and just pop his nails on like this. So I think Graham is really starting to come to life now, apart from the fact that he's headless. So let's change that. So what I've got is the head that we made earlier and we want to cover this. So I'm just gonna move him out of the way so I can cover the head. Now, th this is obviously nice and set, but we need to smooth it out a bit and we need to create glue. So we're going to cover it with some more frosting. So say it's very similar to what we did earlier with the legs. You're just gonna go around the whole thing and give it a thin layer of frosting. Okay, so now that that's nicely covered, just put a little bit more on the top. It gets rid of the lumpy bumpy bits from the Rice Krispies, fills the gaps and it just creates a glue. Okay, so, and then get some more of my sugar paste again. And then, I know I keep saying it, but one of the great things about this sugar paste, this Satina Super Smooth, is that you can roll it thinly. And when you're covering something like this, it's got a little bit of a shape to it and a bit of detail, you want the sugar paste to be really thin because if you have it too thick, you're going to lose that shape. So try again if you can, just to roll it nice and thin. And remember to keep turning it as you're rolling it. Okay, so now we've got our paste rolled. It's enough to cover the head. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit more and I, I just create like a little kind of sausage shape, just a small one like that. And I just put it here and do another one. And the reason I do that is because it gives me a little bit of scope to play with by sort of shaping the eyebrows, like the raised eye, eye sockets on him, without pressing and going through into the frosting. Okay, so to cover the head, uh, we've got our sugar paste nice and thin. Just do one more roll, just to make sure it's thin enough. Okay, so take your rolling pin and your paste and just fold it over like that. Bring it in like so. And then we literally just fold it over like that. And then we start to shape. So start always start from the top and you just start to shape it round like so. There we go. And then turn it round. So we've got this kind of gathering here. So we just pull and smooth and pull, pull the pleats out smooth them down like so and back to the front so same again here smoothing round okay and then what we want to do is we want to cut off the excess but you just want to leave a little bit probably just over I'm gonna say just over a centimeter going all the way around like that get rid of your excess and the reason we want to do that is because we want to pick this up 
and actually tuck this under like this. Otherwise, you're going to see the Rice Krispies underneath. So we took it under. Now, if I just show you underneath, we've still got the Rice Krispies exposed, uh, which is absolutely fine. And we're going to stick a dowel in there anyway to stick him on. But the main thing is you've got this pleat tucked over. Then we can put it back again. And that's where we can just start to smooth it out a bit and shape it. I tend to use my hands for this kind of thing. But if you do want to use a smoother, then that's absolutely fine. Okay. So now we've got the head shape, we want to actually give him a bit of character. So what I've got um, is I've got a ball tool and I want to create his nostrils. So to do this, you take a ball tool and then very gently, you look at where his nostrils need to be. And what you're doing is you're gonna press in to the sugar paste like that. Just make a little indentation so you're happy where they want to be. So if you're happy with your nostrils where they are, then we start to shape them. So you just go in like that and you're kind of lifting the sugar paste up. Now at this stage, if you hit the Rice Krispies, don't worry about it because we're gonna dust a darker green so that's gonna cover up anything anyway. The main thing is that you get a nostril shape that you're happy with and by pressing up like that, you get that really fun kind of nostril shape, okay? And then the next thing we do is we're going to do the, the mouth. So use a Dresden tool and you're gonna go along and he wants to have quite a wide grin. So we're gonna go to the edges here. So press in with your Dresden tool all the way round like so and then just press in again a little bit more because you kind of want the mouth to be open a little bit wider. Then again, I actually use my little finger just because it's the right kind of size, just to smooth it, just to open his mouth up a bit so it's not quite so much of a carved line. And it just smooths his mouth out a bit, opens it up. And then using that bowl tool again, just create a little indentation at the end there and at that side there. And that kind of gives him that really wide grin. And then for the eyebrows, I'm just going to try and do this upside down because obviously I want to do it for camera. But you have to try and squeeze. Normally I would do this towards me with, the, uh, with my thumbs. I'm going to try and use my fingers. And all you're doing is you're just pressing in here just to kind of create an eye socket. And by doing that, you're kind of squeezing the eyebrows up a bit, which really gives in character. Don't worry if you're pushing through to the, um, to the Rice Krispies at this stage because you're going to be covering it with an eyeball anyway. And then finally, for the head, we're going to do the ears because dragons do have these cute little ears. So I'll just show you. So very simple, using the ball tool again. It's kind of roughly between... The, um, the crack of his mouth and the top of his eyebrow here, sort of halfway between, little mark there, and then the same on the other side. Make sure you're happy with the position. And then all you do, very similar to the nostrils, you just open up his ears a little bit like that, kind of dig into the icing, like so. And then the same on the other side. So you're digging in to the icing like that, opening up a little ear hole. And again, don't worry too much if you do hit the uh, Rice Krispies because it is going to be dusted anyway. Now that the head is made, albeit eyes, teeth, etc., um, I'm going to show you how you stick the head onto the body. So what I've got here is a PME Easy Cut Dowel. And the reason I use this is because it's, you can literally cut it with a pair of scissors, which is what I want to do. So what we do is we take our dragon and I want to measure the height of the body and then look a little bit more for the head, stick the head on. And then I just want to cut that with some scissors. So I'm just marking it with my thumb. And then you get some scissors and cut that off. Make sure you cut it away from people because it does go flying. Okay, so now I've got that. 
I'm going to put this in the head. Now, ideally, you would leave the head to set overnight so the sugar paste is nice and firm. Um, but for the purposes of today's tutorial, I'm going to do it straight away. So what we do is we take our dowel and we just press it in to the Rice Krispies at the bottom like that until you've got it far enough in that you feel that it's nice and firm. And just take a little bit of frosting just to act as a bit of a glue. Pop that on the top. Just poke it down all the way. Until you're happy that it's in the right position. Okay, so now I'm just going to have a little bit of a clean down and then we're going to move on to adding the details. So let's start by adding the teeth. Now I've already made the teeth here and it's very simple to do. It's just the same as what we did with the fingernails, but, other, but you're using white instead and just making them a little bit longer and thinner. So I'm going to place some glue in his mouth like that. And then I'm going to do these bigger teeth around the edge sticking up which I quite like. I quite like the idea of him having his teeth going up over the top of his mouth. I'm going to do another one on the other side here, like that. Okay. And then just make sure I've got the gl enough glue on that it sticks. And just put another few in, again, from the bottom, sticking up, because I think that's what makes him look really cute is if you put the teeth sticking up like that from the bottom. And then I'm just gonna put another couple in the middle going downwards. So I just stick them the opposite like that. And I really like that. I think he looks very, very cute. And I quite like it if they're not all the same size as well. Okay, so now onto the eyes. So I've already made one of the eyes and I'm just gonna show you how I did it. So take some, again, some just some white, uh, sugar paste and then just roll it into a ball and just flatten it slightly so you've got this nice kind of rounded shape but it's a little bit flatter then we take a little bit of black sugar paste and it needs to be sugar paste not modeling paste and the reason is when we press it so I'm just going to press it on my fingers just to make it a bit thinner let's get a little bit more we want to sort of blend it in to the white so it's not sort of raised on top of the eyeball and it's blended in and if you've got a nice soft sugar paste, you can do that. So we take our eyeball here and just press that on like so. But then you can sort of blend it in, press it down, make it a little bit bigger like that. You can manipulate it a little bit like that. So it matches the other one. And then just take a little bit of white. And again, you can just use sugar paste. And what you do, I mean, this is a really, really tiny amount. And just roll it between your fingers into like a, a, a tiny little sausage shape. And then just stick that on the top like that. Press it down. This is a, kind of what gives the eyes character. And then take another bit, which is half the amount of that. And what you're kind of putting that so it's underneath to the side of the other bit, like so. Okay, and they're opposites, so the eyes are opposites. So we're gonna now stick our eyes on. So I'll put a little bit of glue onto the eye sockets. And then you put your first eye on and you want the eye, so the, uh, the white bit is on the outer side of your dragon. And then put his other eye on here, like so. This is really starting to come to life now. Okay. Uh, okay, so now for the horns. So I've got some green modeling paste here and I've colored it with holly green. So I'm just going to show you what to do. So you just get like a grape sized amount. I'm just going to knead it so it's nice and soft. And then just roll it into a ball in your hand. And then all you do is just roll one end like that. So it's in like a teardrop kind of pear shape and then just make it a little bit more pointy at the top, like so. And then we just get some glue and just put some glue on the top and stick these on. I've already made one, so we're just gonna stick that one on. And then this one, 
like that. I'm just gonna put them a little bit to the edge of the eyes. Okay, so as you can see from the back, I've been really busy making the scales and the wings. So I'm gonna show you how I did it. So I've got the same modeling paste, which I've rolled out quite thin um, here. And this is how to make the wings. They may look quite complicated, but they're actually really, really simple. So what you do to start with is you're gonna cut a line down and then a line across. So you've got a right angle with the bottom end being longer than the top end. And then basically you're gonna make it into a right angle triangle, but when you cut that, you just want it a slight curve. So I'm just scoring it first and I'm just gonna cut it round like that. So you've got a curve there. And then all you do is you take a, a circle cutter. We've got two different sizes. Take the larger one and on this corner here, you're just gonna cut half a circle out like that. And you're gonna go along again with the same one along here and cut that one out. And then you're gonna go in with the smaller one here, like so. And then, just with your knife, just trim off the excess bit here, like that. And then on the top bit here, you're just kind of cutting a V shape out at the top there. And then just rounding it off in there. And there you have a very simple wing shape. Now you need to leave that to set. So I've already made them here and I just stuck them on the back here using edible glue. They're nice and small so they stick on really really well and they look very very cute. And as for the scales, again very very simple. All you do is roll out some of the same modeling paste colored with the holly green and do two different sizes. I do one size circle cutter, then I do a smaller size circle cutter and then I just cut them in half like that. Very, very simple. And I use the larger ones along the back and the smaller ones along the head and the tail. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on just to show you, just to finish it off. I just stick them on like that. Well, you need to leave them to set a little bit so they're quite firm so you can easily stick them on and hold them in position. And there we have it the wings and the scales. So now the very last thing to do is to add the circle scales on his body and do the dusting. So I've got two size circle cutters here, um, quite small ones, and now I'm gonna create like the scale effect on him. So all we do, we start off with a larger one and you're just putting a few indents into the sugar paste and you can overlap slightly and also just put a little bit of pressure on one side then the other side just to sort of make it a little, a little bit more uneven it kind of gives a more realistic look so that's all I'm doing is I'm just pressing just really randomly over his body you don't overthink it just keep pressing around like that and then I'm going to go in with a smaller one just do a little bit of overlapping I just think it adds a nice effect if you do that. And then the same on the other side here. And then on his body. Okay, and now on his arms, we don't do it on his feet, but we just wanna do a few little ones on his arms. So we do the sort of smaller circle because his arms are quite small. So just press down and the same on the other side. A little bit of overlapping as well. Like that, up to his hands. And then for his face, so we do a little bit on his face as well. So you're just gonna go in, and I like to use a smaller one around his facial features. Like that. And then the larger one, just as you come out a bit towards the back of his head like this okay and then finally i'm just going to turn him around just to show i'm just going to do the tail so just again press a few on there like that and then just go in again with a smaller one just overlapping and coming to the end here like that okay very very simple now we're going to do some dusting okay so starting off we're going to do the belly so I've just got a flat brush 
and a little bit of the brown um, sugar flare dust. So I'm going to take a little bit of the dust on my brush and then just dab it. You don't want to put too much on because you can build the color up, but you can't take it off. So now that's on my brush, I just want to do a little bit of dusting on here from the edges inwards. So we go like that. And then a little bit as well, sort of along the lines of the, the scored lines that you, that we created earlier. Okay, so down at the bottom and then a little bit on the edge in like that. Okay, and now for the green dusting, I'm using foliage green of the Sugar Flare and I've actually got a circular brush here. Uh, and the reason is what I do is I get a little bit on the brush and actually, again, don't overthink it. Just do it very quickly and very simply. I actually dust in a circle like that on all of the little circles. So again, put a little bit on your brush and dust on in a circle your motion on the circles. Do some over here so you can see this side. Okay, so as you can see, I've done the body and the head. Now, the last thing to do is just to do his nostrils. So you just wanna put plenty of dust in the center of his nostril like that. And the same with the other one. And then we just do a little bit on the top there, just of the raised bit, just to bring his nostrils to life. And then his ears, same again. So a little bit in his ears and then round the outside and with the other one. In the little corners of his smiling mouth. Okay, and then finally, just above his eyes, on his eyebrows here. Just put a bit there. And a little bit here. Okay, there we go. That, that is Graham the dragon finished and I think you'll agree he looks really really cute. I hope you've enjoyed watching and I really really hope I've encouraged you to go out and have a go yourself.